Next to the innovative approach that, if it works, could help us solve the global challenge of rising greenhouse emissions, our Maggie Rooley recently traveled to the Faroe Islands, where some scientists there believe the cure to saving tomorrow could be underwater. Beneath these icy waters, an underwater rainforest rises from the deep. An aquatic jungle of seaweed hiding a surprising possible way to combat the climate crisis. It's all happening here on the Faroe Islands, a remote place sandwiched between Norway and Iceland. It's a rare sunny day as we head out to sea with Ocean Rainforest, pioneers in seaweed farming. Take a look at this. The gap between those two mountains heads directly to the North Pole. In the wintertime, wind just comes ripping through here. There are massive waves. Water temp is normally only a little above freezing. And these are some of the roughest and toughest waters in the world. Hey. Oliver Gregerson grew up by these treacherous seas. He tells us he launched his company here with one mission. How can the Faroe Islands help fight climate change? We don't have much land area. We don't have much forest, but we have an enormous ocean area. We could grow a forest in the ocean by growing seaweed in the ocean, taking up CO2. Seaweed farms are known as a carbon sink, absorbing large amounts of dangerous greenhouse gases from the air. This marine forest captures more carbon than a tropical rainforest. And as places like the Amazon are burned and raised for commercial use, scientists are now looking underwater. We only have three or 5% of the planet that is tropical rainforest, and it's decreasing. While we have 70% of the planet that's ocean. Each seaweed farm also creates a new ecosystem. Once they build it, the animals come. <laughs> oh my God, look at that! They're really adorable. It really is a forest that creates habitat, and it attracts lobsters and fish, things are that are both commercially important for fishermen, as well as just higher biodiversity than you would have found here before. While seaweed's been cultivated in Asia for centuries, marine farming is brand new in the West. Now the next generation of scientists and innovators are revolutionizing the industry. The goal is to basically learn as much about cultivating seaweed as possible and then bring that knowledge back to the U.S. Ruby picked up her life in Vermont and moved here in the middle of the pandemic last year to become the team's seaweed technician. And that is a fantastic <laughs> job. It's a new out. term. It's a new term. <laughs> we kind of coined it here. <laughs> I was just feeling kind of really scared about the future of my generation, and I wanted to use my skills to do something. Seaweed for me was the answer. <laughs> Farming seaweed is now up and coming. Iris Menger was getting her master's in aquaculture when she realized seaweed was the future. Her team seeds the line and nature takes care of the rest. It's the most sustainable. You don't have to add anything. You throw in a white naked line and then you go and see after a few months and then you don't see anything of the white line anymore. <laughs> it just grows. Yes, let's go. Iris shows us their cutting edge seaweed farm up close revealing the massive farm hiding just below the surface. Each line hangs 40 feet deep in the ocean, hundreds scattered over the space the size of a dozen football fields. You know, everyone here at Lake Floor has been telling me how beautiful seaweed is. And when you see it like this and you feel the salt water uh, coming off of it, I get it. it, it's beautiful. Ruby starts harvesting. Your weapon? Even letting me take a whack. This is so exciting, how do you harvest? It's as simple as slicing it with a knife. Today's harvest quickly piles up on board, each bag filled with one ton of seaweed. Next up, all that seaweed's brought back to a processing plant. Here, Floor Marsman is in charge. She takes us inside the factory the team designed and built from scratch, where they clean the seaweed and put it through a grinder. Grinds the seaweed in uh, basically a soup of very small pieces. Yeah. You can see the seaweed too. That goo is then stored, eventually fermented, and put into animal feed. Your company is also turning seaweed, fermenting it, and giving it to animals like pigs. Not only is it good for them, but it lowers their gas, yeah. and that actually Wild helps burping. the environment. And, and that's actually a quite significant part mm. of the total uh, harmful greenhouse gases that's emitted on the planet on a yearly basis. That's methane from cattle. Mm. And we have seen in re our research that we can reduce that up to 
Methane is one of the most dangerous greenhouse gases, and livestock accounts for roughly 14% of all emissions. While more research still needs to be done, seaweed is a nutritional powerhouse for humans. This is fresh from the ocean. This is fresh from the ocean, from the North Atlantic. And, uh, you know, you can have a bite if you like. Really? Yes. Right out of the water. It takes a little shrimp off of it, but that'd be just a little extra surprise, you know? Okay. It's for free. Mmm. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yep. Kind of crunchy, a little salty. Seaweed cultivation globally has become the fastest growing sector of food production. That's beautiful. And it's believed by 2051, seaweed production will be bigger than potatoes around the world. From five to 10 years from now, then I think that we can see seaweed product coming in and replacing uh, other products that today are harmful for, for the environment. Seaweeds being turned into all sorts of different products, from bioplastics and biofuels to clothing. The UN Climate Science Panel has said there isn't enough data yet to confidently say that seaweed is a game changer. But the World Wildlife Fund is taking notice. WWF is investing in seaweed farming because we believe it is one of the neglected climate change opportunities. It's not the silver bullet, but this is one where we can improve the environment and create nutritious food at the same time. For Oliver and his team, the work can be grueling, but seaweed farming is more than just a job. For me, it's very important to, to work in a field that I can basically help save the planet, fight climate change. It's a calling to make this planet a better place. Maggie Bruley, ABC News, the Faroe Islands. Maggie Rooley joins us now from Glasgow, where she is covering the major climate conference that continues. Maggie, the global leaders have now left, but what's on tap over the next few days? Yeah, well, Lindsay, the last two days are really all about these big speeches, big promises from world leaders. But now we get to the hard stuff. We get to the nitty gritty of how you're actually going to turn these promises into real plans. And today was finance day, which sounds like it's going to be double. Lindsay, I promise there was some big news out of today. And this was major. It was the first ever largest meeting of finance organizations ever on climate change. About 450 financial institutions from 45 different countries that represent about 40% of the world's wealth. That is a huge number. They all came together and pledged that over the next decade, they're going to work to reach net zero. And they're going to come up with actual plans. And they promise to be transparent about those plans as well. You know, Lindsay, though, the one thing missing from this huge pledge was fossil fuels. Right now, there's still no concrete action or mandate that they cannot invest in fossil fuels, which many critics say makes this whole plan worthless. But, you know, Lindsay, I have to say, at the end of the day, this is still a huge statement. Going forward, this is the first time that financial institutions have taken note and said going forward we are going to consider carbon emissions as a fundamental thing to take notice of in business decisions. That's brand new. It's never happened before and it's pretty major. So Maggie, clearly this is no longer just about governments at this point. Some heavyweight business and philanthropic leaders are there as well. What are they hoping to achieve? Yeah, Lindsay, exactly. This is beyond governments. Governments are now saying we really need business leaders, philanthropists, activists, everyone involved in this. You know, we had the chance to catch up with Dr. Andrew Steer. He's the CEO and president of Bezos Earth Fund. They just announced a $3 billion investment in nature at COP as part of their larger $10 billion investment to fight climate change. And actually, Lindsay, they were one of the early investors in the seaweed farm that we visited in the Faroe Islands. So, you know, we've seen what philanthropic investment can really do to help companies jumpstart climate action. You know, Andrew told us that he's been coming to COP conferences for more than a decade. And this one, COP26, has the most energy he's ever seen. And he said what excites him most is this intersection he's seeing between governments, businesses, and philanthropy. If you like, there are all these forces at play, some of which are deeply moral, some of which are deeply economic. And they're all at the moment pointing in the same uh, direction. They're not strong enough. <laughs> and we need to just keep trying to ramp up. 
And, and Lindsay, you know, Andrew went on to say he, he called this the chance of a lifetime, saying that you used to think about climate change activism and renewable energies as something that would take away jobs. Now businesses are seeing it as fundamental to the process of creating new jobs. There is huge opportunity for businesses, he says, to invest in clean energy and that going forward, this will be the way to not only save but create jobs in the future. So Finance Day was really big, Lindsay. And again, this is just the beginning of a two week long process to change these promises into plans. Lindsay? Long road ahead. Maggie Ruley, our mm -hmm. thanks to you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.